welcome back to the Cocoa Crafts YouTube channel and this week I want to talk to you about this quilt! Yes! I finally finished my gigantic quilt. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk to you about the experience because if you follow me on Instagram you know that I've been going to this long arm quilting place and I'm going to add a few clips in the middle just for you to see uh, how the experience was and how uh, the machine looks and everything because lots of people when I said long arm quilting machine they didn't know what it was and I didn't, uh, you know, some time ago I didn't know what that type of machine was um, but let me start with just talking about the quilt itself, the fabrics, where I got them, uh, you know, the pattern, the designer, and yeah, just a few more things before we get on to the long arm quilting experience. Okay, so um, I wrote down a few things so that I don't forget. This pattern is the Diana quilt and the designer is from the US or Canada, I'm not sure. Uh, it's called Kitchen Table Quilting. I will leave the uh, information on the description box so, you know, so that you can check her designs. And um, when I was searching for uh, fabrics and I was checking the size and everything, I knew that I wanted to make the exact same quilt that she made on one of her samples because I really loved it. I love quilts with, you know, lots of colors and I love solids as well. So I'm not that much into quilting with uh, very busy prints on fabrics. I mean, if it's something like maybe little dots or stars or something very subtle, then it's fine. Um, but I, I really like quilting with solid colors. I think uh, they look really nice and I think they go with my style and the style of uh, my flat. Um, so yeah, I went for exactly the same fabrics and it was really nice because on her website she has a blog post with all the colors, like the names of the colors that she used and the brand and everything. So I was like, that's perfect. My only problem was that, uh, of course, it was just a little bit difficult to find all those colors because there are loads of colors in this quilt um, on just one website here in the Netherlands, impossible. I checked in the UK and I could find maybe some of the colors, but not all of the colors. So I went, uh, thanks to a friend of mine here, she told me, oh, just check uh, the famous Fat Quarter shop. It's a, a shop based in the US and I think it's like the shop for quilters. I mean, it's called Fat Quarter shop. So um, they have everything like, everything all the fabrics all the all the brands uh they have like different cuts like fat quarters jelly rolls like all the you know everything uh so i went there and of course they had all the fabrics apart from two colors and uh, well i think that they did have those colors but i changed two colors because when i saw them on the quilt and then on the website i was like mm, i'm not sure they looked a little bit strange and more like grayish i don't know they, they didn't look very nice to me so i changed just those two and then i added at the bottom some lilac and purple because i was like oh no not at the bottom here actually so i changed the order of the colors which i know it might not make much sense when you're thinking about the rainbow so how the colors uh, go from warm to uh, cold is the, not happening on my quilt but I was like who cares it's gonna look cute so yeah I wanted to have some big chunk of purple and lilac because you know those are some of my favorite colors as you can tell um, so yeah I'm sorry I'm checking this all the time it's just for me not to get lost um, so yeah, I went on the website um, because I knew I had to pay charges, but if I was going to buy them from the UK, I had to pay charges in any case. So I was like, let's do it on this website. And um, it was the speediest delivery I've had like in my life. I think I ordered and two days or three days later, it was here from the US and I paid my charges and uh, it was a little bit expensive, but it was, I mean, it's not as if I'm going to make a quilt this big every time and I also have quite a few leftovers which I'm going to use for other quilts 
Um, so that was very nice and I'm really happy with, with uh, ordering from them. And all of these are from Art Gallery Pure Elements, which is like one of the divisions that they have. And I have to say that I think Art Gallery are my favorite for solid colors. I've used other brands before like Kona and other different brands. And to be honest, I really love Art Gallery because I think Kona are like a little bit thicker, maybe too thick. And Art Gallery to me are just like the perfect weight. And I don't know, I, I might sound like, like, you know, like really picky, but I don't know, I just prefer them. They're lighter and really nice to work with. So very happy with those. Uh, so yeah, and then of course the size, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have uh, heard me saying that my quilting was going to be gigantic and it is gigantic. And the funny thing is like when you see, check the sizes for the squill, they have four sizes, okay? So I was, I think one is like for a crib, the other one which is quite common, then the other one's like throw, and the other one was twin, and the other one was queen bed. And I was like, okay, so our bed is double bed, it's quite a small bed. Um, and I said, oh, twin should be fine. I mean, because I'm not going to go for queen. Imagine if I went for queen. Uh, I, thought it, I thought it was fine. So I'm checking it was 72 inches by 96, which is 182 centimeters, which is the width. And then, why didn't I think about that? Two, almost two and a half meters long i mean it's really long and that's why now at the top of the quilt we are doing this because i mean it's so long that it goes to the floor so why didn't i maybe check that before i think that if i were to make this quilt again which i'm not um not because i don't i don't like it it's just because i mean i already have this one is is enough um i wouldn't go for twin i go for throw which is the smaller size uh maybe that one might not be wide enough but honestly how long is this quilt it's so long it's just incredible um so yeah that's that was my issue with the size and i remember when i put it on the living room when i had my quilt top finished and i was going to sandwich the three layers together i put it on the living room and my boyfriend came and he was like how big is this thing and i was like I don't know, it's gigantic. Honestly, he was flipping and he was like, can't you just, you know, cut it to make it shorter? And I was like, I almost fainted. I was like, cut? After all the hard work, are you, you know, what, what are you saying? Um, so yeah, I was like, no, I'm not going to cut. I'm not going to unpick. And also the design, I mean, if you make it shorter, when you have finished the quilt top, it doesn't make sense with the layout of the design. So you cannot really cut it you have to do it in a different way um so he said no we're going to do it this way so um i had my three layers together of course the quilt top took me a little while to cut all the pieces so many uh half squares and uh so, i mean lots and lots of work as you can see so just are we like um if you're not into quilting so you just start like with little uh, blocks and then you keep on building those and you make one row after row after row after row and then you join the the rows and oh there is something funny that happened when i was doing the uh purple part one of the pieces when i cut them had like a cut on one side that it was too big to be the similar ones so even if i tried to conceal that cut within the similar ones when joining joining that piece to another piece it was going it was not going to work out because it was the cut was too big when i and i was like oh, that's fine i'll cut another one when i went back to my scraps like all the fabrics left i mean i had the fabric left from every single color but that one i just couldn't believe it i was like okay so my quilt is ruined because of course i couldn't use another color because it all has like a purpose each color has like its its job its role so i was like mm, nice and i was not going to order again from fat quarter shop in the us just for one fabric like one fat quarter like something really small so I had to search online, I couldn't find it the same color here in the Netherlands. So I was like, hmm, 
I changed my, the VPN on my laptop to Germany just because then the results on Google are better. So then I found a shop, uh, a shop in Germany um, with this fabric and these colors. So I ordered there and oh yes, I got my fabric and I could finish the quilt. But honestly, I was like, why that <laughs> this is happening to me uh, when you know I have leftover from all the colors, but this one. So, uh, continuing with uh, all this I'm saying, so those are all the things about the uh, quilt itself. So, when I went to try and quilt it myself, when you talk about quilting, because you say the word quilting and it is like everything regarding the quilt and the quilting process, but the quilting itself is this design that you do on top of your quilt and that you do it to, of course, make it nicer and also to join the top, the middle, which is the wadding or batting, depending on where you live, you call it one way or the other, and the back, which is, in this case, I use this uh, beautiful uh, ruby star, uh, like starry uh, fabric. Uh, so you join both, uh, three of them, and you use a specific design. You can go for straight lines like I did here, more like, you know, I did random spaced out uh, uh, lines, but you can make such amazing designs, not myself, I mean, I don't know how to do those amazing designs, but uh, so many people do, and if you follow, I mean, just check on the US, because in Canada, they are amazing quilters. I'm not saying that you don't have amazing quilters here in Europe, but there's more tradition there, and wow, I mean, incredible. You see so many amazing designs, and so when I tried to start doing this quilt on my regular sewing machine, it was just impossible. I know that some people managed to do it but it was not going to happen to me because i don't have like a big table to put my machine and then the quilt because you apart from the machine fit like the quilt fitting inside of the machine you also need to have like a very big space like a very big table and i didn't have that so it was just impossible and i was like okay i'm not going to do that so i searched for a long arm quilting business here in the netherlands and my plan was to actually just send the quilt for them to quilt it because I've done that in the UK with a big quilt, not as big as this one, uh, one of my samples for from one of my quilting designs and uh, they did it and it was amazing, it looked incredible and I did like this, like a scallop design, uh, I mean I chose the scallop design and they did it with the long arm quilting machine and they sent it back and it was just beautiful and I was really happy with that. Um, in this case, I found this business which is just outside of Amsterdam, like an hour from an hour and a half from Amsterdam. But the lady who is now older, she told me that she was not doing it anymore because of her health, but that she could teach me how to use her machines because she also rents the machines. So I could do a workshop and then have like a rental day. And that's what I did. Um, so I'm going to show you now, I'm just going to leave a few clips after this and then I'll tell you about my experience with the whole thing. So I'm just like going to add a few clips now so that you can see how it looks and how my experience was and yeah, hope you enjoy that. <laughs>
Okay, so hopefully you like the video and I'm sorry someone is I mean we have so many people doing like works uh, road works and stuff and there and there it's just like anyway, sorry. Um so yeah hopefully you like those videos and that you could see a little bit of how the machine works and how it looks. Um so the first thing that I want to say is when I knew about long arm quilting machines, I was like, oh I'm gonna check how much they are because you know I was thinking uh, in the future when I have a bigger house, uh, I was dreaming of oh yeah, I'm gonna have a long arm quilting machine and then I might do my quilts and maybe I can um rent it as well and you know I was planning all this huge business and and then well huge business and and then I can just you know uh quilt quilt for other people and oh, I was dreaming of that and then I went and checked the prices and also the owner of this uh, business he told me how much the, the, the how much was the machine that I was using 23,000 euros the machine plus the whole like setup like the mm -hmm. frame and everything and I was like what of course there are cheaper machines and smaller frames and everything you can even i think just get the machine itself i think that the minimum is like three thousand euros which compared to 23 is quite yeah it's not the same but i was like what i mean it's so expensive that i was like maybe if i win the lottery then i might be able to get one of those but yeah it's so expensive um, so yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that anytime soon. Um, so about the experience, when I went to do the workshop, it was just two hours so that the woman could tell me how to use the machine because I had to leave my quilt and the batting, uh, wadding and the backing uh, there for her to set it up for me so that when I went at 10 a.m. on my birthday, actually, um, it was everything ready because I, she told me that it takes like two to three hours to just set it up for a quilt this big. I was like, wow. And then when I was there, I could tell why. I mean, there's like a whole process. Uh, you need to lay all the layers, everything flat, and then you have like extensions on the side to keep everything tight. And it's like a whole thing. Uh, so this machine in particular had like a sort of tablet, like an iPad added to the machine and there is like lots of settings and you can actually um, set up the machine for it to work by itself. So if you have like a more integrated, this intricate design to do something more, you can even do like flower shapes and leaves and, and like uh, circles and shapes, like so many, so many incredible things. So if you can set it up on the machine, the design which is what the machine did for one of my other quilts um, and then it does it itself which is to me amazing it's incredible uh, in this case I was going to manage the machine myself so anyway when I did the workshop it was very nice and I at least I knew how to start and finish which is a whole thing it's not as easy as with a normal sewing machine and you need to be also very careful as well because I mean it's a 23,000 euros machine so that's very expensive and you really want to treat it with all the care in the world and um, so yeah i think it was very really nice to at least do the workshop beforehand and then i went there on my birthday at 10 a.m and i finished i think i finished the quilt at around 3 34 so i know lots of hours and we had our lunch break and everything it was almost an hour so um at the beginning I was really worried that I was not going to finish uh, but she was like no worries as soon as you start you will feel you know easier doing it and at first we were doing a starting and then finishing the line and then going back but going back and starting at the, at the like lower for the next line but at the same point so I asked her why couldn't just go instead of imagine starting and finishing and I had to cut the threads and then start again on the other side it was taking me ages and then I said why don't we just go like this and she said that she doesn't usually like to do that because uh, the tension on the quilt might you know get distorted or you know change or 
And I was like, I think it's gonna be fine because of course I wanted to do it in one day. Um, so we did it just, you know, coming and going. And I chose this design, which is just lines uh, with different uh, spaces. So I didn't do it like thinking really how much the space, I wanted to do it more like uh, random. And I think it looks really nice. And we also chose a beautiful thread, which is like a multicolor thread. Uh, it looked like a rainbow, so perfect for this. And um, at the beginning, I uh, the noise the machine, because it's quite noisy, the machine was doing, uh, the needle is like really quite thick because it needs to go through all the layers. Um, the noise, it was really getting into my brain. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna end up the day like just not feeling very well. So I put on some uh, podcast and I said to her, do you mind if, because she was working on something else. I said, yeah, that's fine. As long as you can hear like if the machine makes any noise, a strange noise, then that's fine. So I put on some, my um, uh, headphones and a podcast and I was like, nee, 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 nee. and it went actually really well. And I think um, on our lunch break, which was at 12.31, I think we've done more, more than half of the quilt. So that was pretty incredible. And I was really getting, you know, the hang. And, and another thing that was really good because of course this machine, the, the good thing about this machine is that it can be like a free hand uh, um, sewing machine. So you can just go move it as you please and do any design you want. For those, you need to be very experienced in my opinion and you really need to know what you want to do. I think that you maybe need to even draw on your actual quill like with some chalk material just to know where you're going. In this case, you had like a um, sort of setup that it was horizontal. So you, I clicked the button, it was horizontal, so it didn't move anyway. So it was like a perfect uh, a, a straight line. And then I had to uh, uh, push it again, and then it went down, and then push it again, and then back. So I went this way, la, 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 la. Um, and then we had lunch, and after lunch, we finished the quilt. And of course, then it was the bias binding part. I did my bias binding, like the bias binding itself before going, so I had all these, like, I don't know how many meters it was, it was really big. And uh, we started um, attaching the bias binding as well. That process was very slow because we had to keep on moving on those frames, the quilt, so that it, you know, rolled so that I could keep doing the sides. So it was, uh, I think at some point I felt this is taking longer than the actual quilting. Um, but then it was done and then at the end I just had to do like the very end of overlapping the two ends of the bias binding myself at home, which I did and of course afterwards you have to uh, uh, fold the bias binding towards the backing and hand sewing it in place, which yeah, I was like, this is going to take me ages, but it didn't. I was just, you know, after work, I finished work on Coco Wawa, I just, at my classes or whatever I had to do, I just stopped for um, a couple of hours. And on the weekend as well, I did a little bit and then I finished and, and it was fine. I put on a podcast and, and yeah, I was like, my thumbs were quite short at the end, even though I was using a thimble, which I'm not really used to, but I did this time. Um, and then it was done and my quilt is done and I think it's a really really nice experience. I have to say the, the workshop that I did of two hours was 40 euros which I think is a good price and then the quilting itself, the rental for all those hours was 150. It's pricey but I think it's worth it if you just want to do it once at least. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it again anytime soon because I'm not planning on making such a big quilt again. I think I'm going to make smaller quilts for the living room or a chair or just to give up, you know, as a present. But I'm not going to make such a big quilt again. Uh, and even if it's for a bed, I think I'll go for a smaller size so that I can actually do it on my machine. Of course, if I want to do a special design, something more like nicer, like flowers, I don't know, something more special. I might send it to a place to do it um, or even go and rent it myself again, uh, but not in any time soon because yeah, it was it was quite pricey and then you pay for the thread as well. So the, the cones of the threads, the spools are, I don't know how many meters, but many, 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 many meters. So you pay for the meters that you use, so that's nice. So you don't pay for the whole cone, you just pay for the meters that you use. And um, yeah, I think 
it, it was a really really nice experience and I have this feeling of I really want to have a long arm quilting machine in the future when you know I get uh, old lady and I'm there with all my quills and you know I don't know uh, maybe something silly but I, I really would love that um, so yeah I just wanted to share with you my experience and um, let me know if you are a quilter, if you have used a long arm quilting machine or if you own one, just let me know which one and if it's cheaper than 23,000 euros. Um, I would love to know that and your experience. Um, yeah, so this is my quilt and you know, it's so pre precious. And I was thinking the other day, I, I, I'm i gonna tell my nieces and my nephew that they are going to be the owners of all my things and all my quilts. Um, so yeah please i will tell them please take care of those they are very valuable <laughs> so yeah i don't know um i think quilting is super amazing and heartwarming mm -hmm. and um i don't know it's it's so nice you don't have to think about fitting and well maybe sizing but you know mm -hmm. what i mean is it's really really beautiful i think it's it's something that i discovered a few years ago and yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite hobbies, I think, and I, I separate that from dressmaking. So, yeah, because dressmaking is so, such a big part of my job now with Coco Wawa and my teaching that, I don't know, quilting has become like that really nice um, um, hobby uh, as well as knitting. So, I don't know, it's beautiful. So. Yeah, hope you liked this video and you found it interesting and yeah, please leave me a comment Just let me know what you think about quilting and this and that and everything and hopefully I'll be back at some point sharing something I think I might be sharing some uh, spring summer uh, Dressmaking, you know ideas that of things I want to make um, So yeah, thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video and I will see you very soon. Bye My quilt Beautiful world. <laughs>